Just to help you with your steering before you come out to the white boys further down the course. So Italy, Germany, Switzerland, Britain, France and New Zealand. And uh, an interesting lineup. We have the world champions on an outside lane, but a very fast Italian double, Romano Battisti and Simone Veneri. Closest to you, the Rio Olympian, 33 years of age, tall man, 31 years of age, Battisti, and he is so experienced in this boat. There's the German crew, Timo Piontek, furthest away from you, Caps, jauntily placed backwards, Lars Hartig in the stroke seat, Hartig, 27 years of age, Piontek, round about the same, 26. So there is the Swiss double, coached by Edward Blanc, Nico. Stahlberg in the bows. We saw him in the single last year. Roman Ruizli in the stroke seats. They were sort of young kids on the block, but uh, Roman's now 24, Nico's 26, so they're not that young anymore. Great Britain had such a great skull to take the silver medal in Belgrade three weeks ago behind Lithuania. Not here. Angus Groom on the right of your picture. Jack Beaumont on the left. Good French double. Mathieu Androdias. <coughs> In the bows, Hugo Boucheron, closest to you in the stroke seat. Boucheron from Lyon and uh, Andreas from Bayon. So the world champions in an outside lane. Talk about what you think about that. John Story in the bows on the right of your picture from the South Island. And Chris Harris from uh, Kerry Gowler's club, Aramoho Wanganui. And he is on the left of your picture. Chris Harris, the older of the two at 32. John Story, just 30 years of age. And I think this is a really difficult one to call, Martin. Yeah, it is. Um, I think the British will have probably learned from that uh, silver medal in Belgrade. It was quite close with the Lithuanians. They would be marginally my favourites, but uh, New Zealand have just got off the plane. I think it helps them that the New Zealanders have just got off the plane. Um, we saw dominant performances from two New Zealand crews already this morning, so it doesn't seem to have held them back. And this New Zealand crew we know were successful in World Cups number two and three and the World Championships last year. So I'm sure John Story and Chris Harris will be looking to do the same here. Yeah. And that's their arrival in Europe. They expect the French and probably the Germans to put out strong showings in the first quarter. Um, the British will not be anywhere near the lead in the first 500 metres. That is not their race profile. They do, rather than say, take it conservatively. But, you know, get off the start well, Italy just get won. into their rhythm, feel the pace, and then Germany. they really come through strong in the, in the second Switzerland. half. So that'll be Great where Britain. the British will dominate this race, or France. try to dominate it at least. New Zealand. Attention. Wow. Let's see how we go. They're, They're all up for it. The They're time. all up for it, aren't they? And the double is a light boat, really, and seems to spring up to speed very quickly. So the boat's probably already at maximum speed now. And uh, we see here the uh, That's Swiss Roy, double. 24 years of age. We used to see them in the quadruple skull, but uh, what a start from the Germans at the top of your picture. Italy furthest away, but the two Germans, you can tell because they got both their caps back on the head. Timo Piontek and Lars Hartig from uh, Koblenca and Friedrich Sato is in Gesellschaft. Beautiful start, as they did in the semi-final where they led Switzerland and Italy through the first mark. But uh, they have got pace all the way through these Germans and German men's sculling is on a real high at the moment. Well, you can see it looks like they're still pretty flat out in terms of uh, their pace off the start. Just coming out through a minute, usually the time when you might think you're going to settle somewhat into a sustainable pace. But it doesn't look like there's a lot of settling going on anywhere here. As we get our look at the New Zealanders, who are in lane six at the bottom of our picture. So they look like they're, they might not be in the picture, but I think they're going to be right there, hanging in there through this first 500, then looking to move on as we've seen the other New Zealand boats do as the race gets into the middle. Well, that Kiwi boat, they were probably not in a medal position until they were in the last 500, where I think they went through in third, and then in the last quarter, they sprinted madly and won that gold medal 
last year in Sarasota at the World Championships. So, you know, they're used to rowing from behind. They're, they're not out of contact. The British, I'd say, have had a great start for them. Probably they're closest to the field than I would have expected at this moment. And to me, there's Jack Beaumont and Angus Groom. These have rowed together since, I think, the Junior Championships in Munich in 2000. Not quite 2000, maybe 2006. But they, they're, they're so used to rowing with each other. They kind of intuitively know each technique, like a great sort of striker combination in football that know where the other player is going to be. That's exactly how these two men are, Greg. Well, they were both in the double skull, uh, sorry, in the quad skull in Rio that made the finals. So they're experienced competitors now, and now they want this to be their time. And um, I think this is a strong move from the British in the middle. Obviously, we still have the fast-starting Germans at the front, but um, I'd be surprised if they're able to keep that going. New Zealand is up at 39 already, looking to make sure they stay right in the mix of this race. The Swiss crew as well here, right in the middle of the field, had a fantastic semi-final win yesterday. So um, everything's happening still. Swiss coach by Edward Lonk moved into the smaller boats from the quads and it's the Germans who will go through the halfway mark in the lead. You can see their stroke rate, 37. Not quite as high as the New Zealanders but the British lurking ominously and I do expect the British bows to be in front when they hit the 1500 metre mark. New Zealand, that's a great move in the second quarter for them, Greg. Their coach, Calvin Ferguson, has been very, very sort of, you know, they're not going so well and, you know, we have to wait and see. But uh, they have picked up speed from the heats here and the semi-finals, they're getting better. As you say, the British boat looking very calm, looking very controlled. Still not quite level with the uh, German boat. There's a slight deceptive angle we've got there. You see the boy line just in front. And the New Zealanders, I'm sure, will be just lurking on the left of our picture as well. So in Belgrade, it was a great race between the British and the Germans, but the British got the silver medal ahead of the German double. And uh, the difference was in the third quarter. They had two seconds quicker in Belgrade in the third quarter. And the Germans will know that. They'll know this is where the British do damage. And uh, they will have a bit of a final sprint, but to me, that's race one from the British. It's whether the New Zealanders have got close enough to have that final sprint. And looking at that picture as our camera pans out, we're looking for the bow number six of the New Zealanders, and I don't think they're close enough, Greg. Well, we'll have to wait, I think, to see when we get a nice side-on shot. Here we can see them still keeping the stroke rate up, still working, working hard, as I'm sure they practiced all through the uh, period when they were back in New Zealand. Let's see now, we're coming into 500 to go. We'll get that information. But the British have definitely had a strong third 500. Yeah, that New Zealand double that won in 2012, uh, Conan O'Sullivan, they were up at 40 strokes a minute. But uh, New Zealand will be re do really well if they get through the Swiss in the last quarter. Well, it's the Swiss who are the second quickest in that uh, third 500. We can see there from their graphic. They'll want to now move on and move into that silver medal position. But the British are looking very strong here in the centre of the picture, moving nicely together. Three little roundels of tape on their blades, just so the coach, the Dan Moore, that used to run the Start Potential programme at Reading University, can check how deep their blades are going. You really don't want the blades to go too deep, and the British are very flat. Uh, Jack Beaumont's dad, Pete, who was uh, an oarsman in the Seoul Olympics, came fourth in the British Eight, is out here watching his son. And I'm sure lots of you are watching back in Britain. Jack Beaumont closest to you, Angus Groom behind him, Groom 26, Beaumont 24. That is a hell of a sprint by the British, isn't it? They have just destroyed the field. They've moved really well in the uh, second half of this race. We see them in the red boys now. You can see the distance coming down. Just about 100 metres to go now. I think the British have got control of this. Got to say, the Germans have responded well to the pressure coming back at them. Um, to still be in there with the Swiss now pressing on for the bronze and the New Zealanders in front of us who will be out of your picture. They've got a lot to do if the New Zealanders are going to come up for a medal. But it's the British who are looking like they're going to take this gold here in the double skull. Britain crossed the line, a well-deserved gold medal, Germany silver, Switzerland bronze, New Zealand couldn't quite just find enough in the sprint. France comes in in fifth place. Italy just couldn't live with that pace and finish in sixth place. But you can see what it means to them. They've turned that result in Belgrade around. Admittedly, the Lithuanians aren't here. That won't concern them. They were much better form than Belgrade. Superb second half of the race and Britain take 
their first gold medal of this World Cup. Yeah, great performance. Uh, as we saw, that's, that's not the uh, second-place German crew. Uh, that's the New Zealanders who came in in fourth. Um, but, yeah, no, a really um, well-executed race plan, really, from the British that, as we thought, it would be really close and fast off the start, as we see these pictures of the start. Seeing the Swiss double here. Ruben Riesli. But then um, through the middle, the, uh, the British managed to hold a really nice, strong pace, and then it all came, came as they wanted it to in the second half. See those three tape marks on the blades there. I mean, Jack Beaumont is not the biggest of uh, scholars. But, you know, since he was a young lad, he used to race his dad on the Ergo and in the sculling boat at Maidenhead, where they're, they're, they're from. Um, he's always been so competitive, and he's just got better and better and better. Uh, the four men in the British quad that are in the sort of higher ranked boat, Greg, didn't make the final, and these two were carrying the flag for British sculling. We saw Harry Leesk, actually, who's here in the single, win the B final earlier this morning, but uh, that is a great result from two fantastic athletes. So confirmation there of the result, the win for Graham and Beaumont from Great Britain, ahead of the German double and the Swiss double, with New Zealand getting pushed out into fourth place.